announcement. Uh, this is the five o'clock vigil mass for Sunday tomorrow. Um, it is really not part of our live screen, stream schedule. I just posted that our live stream, our official one with the whole church, will be tomorrow at 10.30 in English. But I felt like I was afraid I didn't get the word out soon enough. So um, I'm doing this mass with Brother Chris to join us. And we'll start at 5 o'clock. Uh, this will be a very humble mass, a live stream, and no music. You're really encouraged, if you're listening, to join us at 1030 tomorrow with our whole church and our music and the regular celebration of the Eucharist. But this is just in case people didn't get the word of our schedule change. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good evening. This is an unscheduled live stream mass. I put out the schedule change earlier this week that our live stream mass for the parish would be at 10.30 tomorrow. And we're having two masses tomorrow with our first public masses. Only 65 people each, and you had to register, and they're both filled. Sorry about that. We're going to try to offer more in the future. But I thought it might be a loving thing to do, or at least uh, something to do in case you hadn't heard the word of the schedule change, and you normally like to watch the Mass at this time, or a little bit later tonight, or early tomorrow morning before 1030. It's available on the web, and so that's why we're doing this. Let us pause and call to mind on this Trinity Sunday, celebrating some of the great mysteries of God's revelation to us, who God is. Call to mind God's mercy. Receive our prayer. You are 
seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
People attending the Mass is at 10.30 tomorrow, Sunday. Today's feast, the Trinity. Theologians have a hard time explaining the Trinity, but there's a very practical application that isn't that hard to explain at all. God is three persons, yet one God. God is a community of persons united in love. And that love is so complete that three are like one. United. We humans are created in the image and likeness of God. And so yes, we are individuals, but we are created to be also in community. To give of ourselves completely to others in love so strongly that it unites us. And so that is our call as humans created in God's image and likeness. Paul in his second reading says, Mend your ways, encourage one another, live in peace, and the God of peace and love will be with you. Well, many of us have been seeing the news and listening to the stories and perhaps even out in the streets with the protests, the violence, and all the things going on in the world. Twelve days now of constant protests, and I have to admit I was taken by surprise. Last Saturday, I celebrated the Mass and the Feast of, of Pentecost, and because we've been very busy, I have not been watching the news. Coming home and then turning on the news for the first time and for the first couple days after Saturday, seeing much violence being appalled and shocked and discouraged and down. But as the week went on and as I paid more attention, I've become more and more optimistic and hopeful. And that's what I would like to talk about today. There is, I believe, reason for optimism. And I'll get to that in a little bit. But other extraordinary things are happening. Four previous presidents have spoken out. The Pope has spoken out. The bishops, the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops, the chair of the Committee on uh, Social Justice or Racial Equality, got that wrong, I don't remember the exact title, spoke out. And it's so unusual that previous presidents would speak it tells us that this is indeed a very critical moment in our nation's history and in the world. And what's even more incredible is that the presidents, previous presidents, would agree. I invite you to read their statements. Also, the Pope and the bishops very much agree with what the previous presidents said. And that's a great occurrence also. Summarizing some of the things that they have said is that the recent protests after the, in, the, just, uh, the death of uh, George Floyd are protests against legitimate, systematic injustices in our society. Violence is never right. And it's not the way to come about justice. Violence gains nothing and loses much. But other things, indifference is not an option for all of us at this time. Love demands that we listen to the voice of the cry of the poor, the voice that the protesters are raising of the systematic injustices that do exist. They are our brothers and sisters, and we can no longer turn a deaf ear or a blind eye to those cries. They've been persistent. True peace that we all want comes through justice, and justice cannot be obtained unless we all take up our part. I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic that the sustained voices of protest are raising issues that we need to deal with. 
And I'm optimistic that so many of them are young people and people of different colors, different backgrounds, all coming together and letting their voice be heard. I believe this really can be the beginning of a great era in our country. This is painful, but like birth, after a great suffering, there can be new life. I not only believe it can be, I dare to say I even believe it is. This type of sustained voices is unheard of. Now, I can hear objections, and I have them too. We're all conflicted, right? There's violence, looting. There's attacks on the police. Things being thrown and more. These are wrong. And it's easy to see it as an us against them. Police showing force against protesters, protesters showing force, and saying, oh, well, it's justified because it's in response. But what I really want to point out or say that justice isn't us against them. These are our brothers and sisters. Police have the right to go to work, be safe, and come home to their families. But so does everyone else. And to make reforms that allow our social, our law enforcement, and our criminal justice systems to be more just will not only make it more likely that those who are police will have a better life, but the police will too. It's a win-win situation if we have the courage to recognize there's problems that we all need to work together. Also, an objection is, since there is violence, I'm not going to listen. Don't let the distraction take away from the message. There are great injustices. That's why I quoted the popes, the presidents, the bishops. We're all called to work on those. Another problem or objection that I hear often is that it really isn't that bad. This is, after all, 2020. These things are all behind us. The problem really does exist. People speak out. The hundreds of thousands of voices can't be that off base. The presidents, the Pope, bishops, saying that it really does exist. It is important to recognize that love demands we listen and recognize there may be experiences other Americans have that we don't necessarily share if we don't believe the problem really exists. And so love demands, and I think a message is, we must acknowledge that or seek to find out what the truth is. There are other objections like coronavirus, I don't want to spend much time on that. Yes, it's dangerous to be out there in groups. But one possibility is that there's people in this country who find the injustices of their daily lives more deadly than the coronavirus. All that besides, I'm still optimistic because this moment is a moment when every American can really work together to make this country better, to heal our divisions, to work to solve the injustices of our time. And so, to our young, I would really stress that as you choose careers, as you think about what to do to about with your lives, there is this great call right now to the generations, to the younger generation especially, to find careers and dedicate your lives to bringing about justice, to working to make this world a better place for all people, to promote the common good. Careers like police, lawyers, politicians, sociologists, teachers, public policy makers, think tanks, etc. Probably many careers that I couldn't even dream of. But also, much has already been done. 
There are tremendous ideas proposed through research and studies, things that have been tried that have proven helpful. And so together we can work to solve these things if we dedicate ourselves to it. You know, I remember many years ago when I was graduating from high school, the goal of America was to put a man on the moon. And it was because of that that when I went in to see my guidance counselor, he said, what you want to do with your life? I said, I have no idea. And he says, oh, you're good at math and science. Why don't you be an engineer? I loved being an engineer, and it was good. But I also left it because I recognized that although that was good, there are things that are better to work on. Can't help but be uh, amused or interested in the coincidence that we've had the SpaceX launch at this same time. To the youth, the great call of America today is to work to make America just for all people. And this is a harder job than putting people on the moon. But with the help of God, we can do it. It may not even happen in a generation, but working together towards this purpose is the most noble thing we could be doing as a people. And to those older who've already had careers or are working in careers, there are still many things each one of us must discern on how we can work together to make the world a better place. That our actions are important and indifference is not an option. We can educate ourselves and talk to others who might be experiencing life quite differently than we do and try to see and experience and hear about their experiences and see what they go through. And we won't get that by watching the same old news channels we always watch that tell us a worldview that we want to believe or do believe. We need to change the channel. We need to search and try to find the truth. Talk to people in our lives that we know that can help us see. There's an example of a couple of parishioners that come to mind. One of them uh, ran a chemical or pest control company. And in his retirement, started a new company to train vets and unemployed people in order to teach them and get them licensed to employ them. I know of others in our parish who talk and share how as different people in different jobs in, in the midst of a corrupt system still brought justice and truth to it. One particular person who is a retired policeman who shares how on the job it was God who guided him. And he would walk around the community and the neighborhood and talk to people and build relationships. There are many things we can do. Each of us is called to do our part. All of us have a role. And so in conclusion, the gospel today tells us God sent his son into the world not to condemn it, but to save it. Last week and the week before the ascension and Pentecost, the message was that Jesus has ascended into heaven and sent his Holy Spirit so that now we are the hands and the feet and the presence of Jesus. This week's feast tells us that we are all in relationship, brothers and sisters in Christ, and a community called to live in love for one another. And that peace only comes through justice, love's minimum requirement. We can do this. I am optimistic. With the help of God, we can build a better world. Let's take this moment of our history and our nation to do our part.
the church in the world. We pray for the church and we strive to be the loving image of the Holy Trinity in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations to revere the common bond of humanity that unites us in the dignity of God's children, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healthcare workers and those who put their lives at risk for caring and those suffering from coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a sense of mutual responsibility and care among all citizens during this time of pandemic and social unrest, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a good growing season for farmers and all who work to provide food that nourishes us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Betty Hacker, Rosalie Sala, Arturo Vega, John Duda, Richard Olvera, Beatrice Botello, Maggie Bauman, Alejandro Gonzalez, Charlie Bauman, Carol Moore, Jackson Ivanic, Maria Guerrera, Ramon Cervantes, Friar Joseph Martin, Anne Marie Roca, and all who suffer from COVID-19, and that the love of friends and neighbors and their prayers and the grace of God may help them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, especially Constantino, Angelina Molini, uh, Anne, Mary Ann Lambert, Thomas Vernon, Francisco Orgel, Helen Lip, let us, and George Floyd, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for peace, for protection of all in the streets, and for justice, the basis of true peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have revealed to us by your, your Son the grace of your Holy Spirit. Hear these prayers of your baptized and adopted sons and daughters, which we make in the name of the same Jesus Christ our Lord, through his grace and that Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through your goodness we receive this bread, we offer fruit of the earth, work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through your goodness we receive this wine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, and become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to plead for the sacrifice we offer you. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of all my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the may Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. O oh, our good and good of all, this holy church. Sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O oh Lord, this oblation of our service, and by it make us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and every way, we give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in the trinity of one substance. For whatever you have, what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by the angels, archangels, cherubim, and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day with one voice as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy 
care for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. That was the appropriate one given today's gospel. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, Mark, our regional bishop, and all the clergy. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Today especially remember the toes of soul, Constantine and Angelina Longili, for whom this Mass was offered. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, and the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Soul. 
Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you now sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. And I unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be separated from you. May receiving this sacramental Lord our God bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal trinity, undivided in unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements. Um, next week, um, you have to stay tuned for the live stream schedule. We may switch to 1030. Uh, good chance of that. I'm trying to work with my team um, because it's manpower, uh, you know, the camera crew and all that. And so right now we only have two public masses this coming weekend, and that's because we don't yet have enough volunteers who've volunteered and are trained. Um, we have actually had many volunteers, but I said, and it's like the guidelines, and I think it's the right decision that you must be 64 or younger, and so that did take away a lot of our volunteers, or not at risk, and because it's a little higher risk being in meeting people at the door. So please go on our website and volunteer if you take on that ministry to help others receive the Eucharist. And so we'll continue to grow in our capacity. Many people weren't able to come to Mass this weekend. I'm aware of that, painfully aware of that. So we're working hard to do the best we can. The live stream for the Spanish Mass is at 8 a.m. tomorrow. The live stream for the English Mass at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Glorify the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God.